HP's Pavilion series has been around since the mid 90s. And since then, it's dramatically evolved. It's pretty much been around for almost as long as I've been around. Now with that said though, today we have the latest 2022 iteration. This bad boy right here is rocking Intel's latest and greatest 1235U i5 processor. We have eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory. We also have Intel's integrated Iris XE graphics. Additionally, we do have a reasonably generous one terabyte solid state drive, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 standards on board. And yes, this is the 15 inch display with a full HD resolution. Now, of course, as always, we're gonna put this review in a way where it kind of goes through real world factors that people look for when they buy laptops. And we're gonna see if the HE Pavilion lives up to its expectation as a good quality mid-range laptop, or if HP's dropping the ball with this one. As always, if you enjoyed the review, make sure you hit that like button and consider subbing to our channel. It genuinely helps us grow. Let's go. The HE Pavilion 15 comes in the same packaging we've literally seen for the past decade or so. Literally nothing's changed, so you have a cardboard box with HP's branding on it. Now, once you do open the box inside, the first thing you will of course find is the laptop itself. Remove that protective plastic packaging and here it is, nimble little thing, but more on that in a quick minute. You also have a smaller 45 watt charging adapter, which makes total sense given that this is a U-series processor. Unfortunately, it comes with that non-USB-C charging cable, which is a real shame in my opinion. Now you also of course have the standard wall charging cable piece. And past that, finally, you have a little brochure that kind of serves as the quick start guide regulation and warranty information. In terms of design, depending on who you ask, the HG Pavilion is regarded both as a mid-range and a budget laptop, although it reminisces more with a mid-range laptop, so it has a nice mix of plastic and metallic finishes on the exterior. This laptop does have a relatively hefty weight of 3.8 pounds, making it slightly heavier than the average 15-inch laptop. Now with that said, when you get to the top side, you have this really nice machine trimmed metallic finish. There's no particular texture. In fact, it's quite smooth to the touch. I personally like the simplicity of this. In the center, you have HP branding and you have this nice mirror-like reflective surface right around it that gives it this elegant look. The rear side of this laptop is quite majestic in my opinion. So again, you have that nice metallic finish. And in the center, you have that pavilion branding, which just looks really nice. Well done, HP. Making way to the sides, IO port diversity is good, but not great in my opinion. So you have a high-end HDMI 2.1 port, you have a USB-A Super Speed port, you also have a non-Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port, which does, however, thankfully support power delivery and display port functionality. Past that, you'll notice in the far corner, you have a introverted headphone jack, which kind of seems to just hate all of its IO port buttons and is just doing its own thing in the corner there. Now on the other side, you do have another USB-A super speed port. You also of course have the DC charging port slot over here. And you'll notice you have this little hole. This is for the physical security lock should you want to add one. The bottom of the laptop is pretty standard stuff, so you do have a pretty normal looking plastic surface finish. You'll notice you have a relatively massive air intake vent, which is always good news in my opinion. And you will also notice on either corner of the laptop, you do have a speaker grill. This of course means you have a dual speaker or stereo speaker setup. We will be doing a sound test later on in the video. Unfolding this laptop paints a pretty good picture because you have a high quality metallic finish inner chassis. On top of that, you do have a dedicated fingerprint scanner located towards the right corner, right above the stickers. You'll also notice the trackpad is strategically placed in the center of the laptop, which is a good decision. Take notes, Lenovo. And overall, the quality of the trackpad is pretty good as well. So it is a plastic surface finish, but the clicks are pretty tactile. It's well calibrated, and generally speaking, surfing on this thing is a pretty nice experience. The first thing you're going to notice about the keyboard is the fact that you have a generous amount of surface area per keycap, which not only minimizes typos, but also makes it easier to look at the keys on the actual keyboard. Now, with that said, the keystroke experience is decent, but not great. So while you do have a tactile amount of push per keystroke and an ample amount of key travel, the keycaps are finicky and flimsy in nature, which actually takes away from a high quality typing experience at times. Compare this to 
Lenovo's IdeaPad series or Dell's Inspiron series, which actually have vastly superior typing experiences. Now with that said, you do have a fully backlit keyboard with multiple brightness settings and you have the inclusion of a full size 10 keypad. And the biggest competitive advantage here is the fact that you have a generous amount of surface area per keycap again. I'm happy to say that the hinge quality seems pretty good here. So you have the right amount of stiffness. Also, there isn't a whole lot of wobble. As long as you don't use this thing like an animal, it should last for the years to come. As far as display fitting goes, so you have a fairly thin chin with some HP branding at the bottom. Now the bezels are not as narrow as some other laptops in a similar price range, but they're not all that noticeable either. And you also again have a fairly thin forehead. However, in the center of it, you have that hideous 720p webcam. I don't know why it's even legal for laptops to still have HD webcams, like full HD should be the bare minimum, seriously. Of all the mediocre displays and all the mediocre laptops, HP figured they'd join the party. So basically you have a modest resolution of 1920 by 1080p, you have a standard 60 hertz refresh rate and a surprisingly good IPS panel that has great viewing angles. But unfortunately, you only get a mere 45% NTSC color rating, which means everything looks bland on here. If you are going to be doing color sensitive activities like photo or video editing, for example, you may want to look elsewhere. On top of that, to further destroy your hopes, you only have a peak brightness of 250 nits. While HP isn't the only company doing this, this basically means if the sun is having a great day, your laptop screen will suffer from a lot of glare. Now, thankfully, under more moderate indoor settings, it should be okay. Despite rocking a i5 U-series chip, performance on this laptop has been surprisingly good. So of course, day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing or watching videos on YouTube are going to work in a super fast in snappy fashion as they should. But even really demanding tasks like 4K video editing actually works in a very smooth and lag free way, which surprises me because this laptop only has eight gigabytes of RAM in this particular configuration. Not just that, however, even some older games like GTA 5, for example, are able to run on upper medium settings with DirectX 11 enabled at a healthy 30 plus frames per second consistently, which in my books is pretty good performance for a non-gaming machine. Few laptops handle thermals as well as the HG Pavilion does. So under unrealistic peak loads, we were able to hit a average surface temperature just above 43 degrees Celsius, which is well below the average on these kind of tests. On top of that, under more realistic sustained loads, we hit around 36 degrees Celsius, which again is far below the average. Now, fan noise is equally as impressive. So we found that A, the fan hardly goes on in the first place, but B, the fan noise has a maximum noise of just 41 decibels, which again is pretty impressive for a 15 inch laptop. In terms of battery life, we got just shy of eight hours at 50% brightness during activities like web browsing, watching some videos on YouTube, and even using the speakers at about 40% volume. Now, of course, your mileage will greatly vary depending on the kind of tasks you're performing. In terms of the sound quality, I was pretty impressed. So that Bang & Olufsen stereo speaker setup definitely lives up to its name. So you have a decent amount of volume, but also you have nice, crisp, clear audio that seems to stay even at higher volume levels. Have a quick listen for yourself. I don't wanna go to work cause my boss is a jerk and I'm not even that pay. I need a change in my life cause I don't feel alive and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh, hold my beer for a minute, I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket. I'm going on a trip and I don't plan to visit. I'm gonna stay there till I feel like I'm winning all. And this is just... Starting at a $750 price point for the i5 configuration, the new HE Pavilion 15 definitely has a fair bit to offer. So you get decent build quality with a nice mix of premium and standard materials. You also have a great trackpad and keyboard to go along with it. And I of course enjoy the performance you get on this machine given again the configuration. Now some things holding this machine back include the lack of reasonable IO port diversity and also the fact that you have a very subpar display, which prevents this laptop from truly standing out from the competition. Now, if you are a business user, a student, or someone who doesn't necessarily have a creative use case, or you're not someone who's involved in heavy graphic-based activities, 
and you also don't need all day battery life, you will find this laptop covers pretty much everything else and is great from that perspective. It's a good productivity machine. But again, if you need those specific items, you may want to explore your options. Overall, let me know what you think of this laptop if you are interested in purchasing it. I will leave links in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button and consider subbing to our channel for more reviews like these. Take care.